Okay, so we've done glycolysis and then pyruvate oxidation. Glycolysis was out in the cytoplasm. Pyruvate oxidation brought us into the mitochondria all the way to the inside to the matrix. And now we're on to the next step, which is called the citric acid cycle. Cit acid cycle and it's a cycle which means that the stuff that we're gonna make in the cycle is going to be used to do the next turn and so the reactants are basically the same as the products it's like we're gonna remake the thing that we began with by the time we get to the end and so when we start the citric acid cycle we're gonna start with a four carbon sugar that is called oxaloacetate OAA for short so oxaloacetate OAA and we're gonna add our reactant from pyruvate oxidation to the OAA. And if you can remember, our reactant from the previous uh, set of reactions, the pyruvate oxidation, was our two carbon molecule acetyl. So we're gonna add our acetyl in with this molecule of OAA, and we're gonna make the first product of the citric acid cycle which is called citrate. And if you just look at what we got over here, you can figure out how many carbons are inside of citrate. And it is one, two, three, four from the OAA, plus one, two from the acetyl. And again, we call this citrate. And so citrate is a six carbon molecule, six carbon sugar, that is the very first kind of like product of the citric acid cycle. And to keep everything straight, it's gonna be important here where these carbons came from, I shade them. And so if you can remember back to what it is we care about inside of that molecule of glucose, it is high energy electrons. High energy electrons are inside of that original glucose molecule. And those are still inside of this molecule of acetyl. So these carbons that are coming in from acetyl who are straight off of that molecule of glucose, that original molecule of glucose, these are the ones that have the energy. These are the high energy electrons inside of here. These are the ones that we can use to do work. These carbons, which are left over from the previous cycle, they're kind of like old used up ones that really don't have as much energy uh, as the incoming acetyl. This is kind of the old used up carbons. These are the fresh new ones. And so these are the ones we care about. These are the ones that we're just kind of sticking around so we can keep doing more of the cycle. So when we come over here and we look at the citrate molecule, four of those carbons are from that molecule of OAA and two of them are from the acetyl. And the reason that's important is because in reactions like the next one, it matters where they came from. So in the very first set of reactions right here, we're gonna lose two molecules of CO2. And for those of y'all that are paying attention up to this point, that might seem really stupid to you. And the reason that might seem really stupid is because if we're losing two molecules of CO2, that means that we just lost two carbons. They're not attached, they're individual, but that means we just lost two carbons. And it's like, we just had a four carbon molecule, we added two to give us six, and now we're losing two again. So it's like, why did you even do this step if you were immediately going to lose two carbons? And the reason why it's okay that we lost those two carbons is because these two carbons that we're gonna lose, these are the ones from the previous rotations. These are some of those shaded carbons. And so the new molecule that we have left over, which has only four carbons inside of it, two of those are from that OAA, but the two that came in on that original acetyl molecule, those are still here. And so we haven't actually lost those. You know, they're still available for us to do something. But these leftover molecules from the OAA, they're still hanging around. So just like before, if we broke these covalent bonds and we went to a smaller, more stable molecule, that means that energy has become available. And in this case, the energy is inside of those high energy electrons. And so what we're gonna use is a carrier molecule called NADH, just like we saw before. And it is gonna carry away two of the electrons that used to be inside of this citrate molecule, which in turn came from the acetyl. And so two of those high energy electrons, we got them. We just captured them with this reaction so that we can take them somewhere else to do the next set of reactions. But there's still more inside of here. And so the next subsequent set of reactions, you do not need to know all of the different steps. They are really cool. When I took, a took AP Bio, I had to know all of these different steps. Um, I'd recommend you look at them, they are kind of interesting. And if you are interested in pursuing science um, in college, when you take biochemistry, every single one of these steps in the citric acid cycle is usually how they use as a model to teach you biochemistry. 
or even organic chemistry. And so what's going to happen in all these other steps is that we are slowly siphoning off the remaining high energy electrons that are contained within these two carbons that originally came from that acetyl, which originally came from the glucose molecule. And so first, we're going to go through another exergonic reaction, make energy available to form ATP. Then we're going to remove more of those electrons. This time they're going to go on a different carrier molecule. This one's called FADH2. So FAD is what you start with. Once it accepts the electrons, it gains two protons and becomes FADH2. And now the electrons are inside of there. And then just before we get to the very last stage, we're going to take off one more electron that again used to be within this <clears throat> citrate, which used to be inside of the acetyl, which used to be inside of the glucose. And now we've arrived back at OAA. And so again, you remember that the shading indicates that they're from the previous cycle. These are the used up old low energy carbons. And the reason why they are these used up old low energy carbons is because all of their high energy electrons are gone. They've all left and they've left inside of these molecules of FADH and NADH. And along the way, we also made two ATP. And so if we think about our net set of products from this whole cycle, we ended up with three NADH, one FADH2, and one ATP. And that's what we're gonna get out of the citric acid cycle. <clears throat> the other interesting thing to think about is what is left of our original glucose molecule. Because our original glucose molecule, if you look back over here to our original things, our original glucose molecule was turned into pyruvate, but then those pyruvates were broken down into acetyl because we lost one of the carbons of CO2. And then those acetyls became part of this molecule of citrate, but then all of, as they go around and around in this circle, they're slowly going to be lost to CO2. So by the time we get to the end of the citric acid cycle, all of the carbons that are inside of that original glucose, they're all gone. They're not here anymore. They left as CO2. And right now when you breathe and CO2 comes out in your exhales, all of that CO2 that's coming out in your breath used to be a part of things that you ate. It's all of the carbons that were inside of the things that you ingested either as sugars or proteins or fats, and they're all leaving your body because they've been metabolized. The thing that remains that is actually the most important part are the electrons. And the electrons are now inside of those molecules of NADH and FADH. And even though when we go through the end of the citric acid cycle, it might seem like, oh, well, the whole thing's all over. All of our carbons are gone. The most important parts are still there because the carbons can't be used to actually make energy. They can't do any sort of complex um, reactions like we're going to see in the next set of things. Instead, it's these electrons that are the most important part. And so NADH and FADH, those are all the remain of that original glucose. All the carbons are gone. They've all res been respired. They've all left as molecules of CO2. And they're going to keep going around in this circle, and they'll eventually be lost. But during the citric acid cycle, that's where we're getting our payday of all of these high-energy electrons.